Scottie Pippen was the first person Michael Jordan thanked in his Hall of Fame speech because he never won a title without Pippen. Here's the retrospective of the 90s Bulls dynasty through the lens of Scottie Pippen. We'll talk about his road to the NBA, where does he rank all time, and how good he was without Jordan. Early life and the road to the NBA. Scottie Pippen grew up in a small town in Arkansas as the youngest of 12 children. When he was a freshman in high school, his father suffered a stroke, which placed him in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. And the poor Pippen family didn't have enough funds to send Scottie to college. Scottie made the varsity team as a sophomore, but he struggled to earn playing time until his senior year because he was always super skinny. Even though he was a talented point guard, Scottie stood only at six foot one when he graduated and had zero college offers. His basketball dreams would have likely been dead right then, but his high school coach intervened and asked a favor of his good friend Don Dyer, who coached at the University of Central Arkansas. Dyer couldn't offer Scotty a scholarship, but he gave Pippen the role of a team manager, which enabled him to earn some money and train with the basketball team. Scotty barely played, and Coach Dyer told him he needed to use his freshman year to bulk up. However, Scotty experienced a remarkable growth spurt, and before the start of the next season, he stood at his current height of six foot eight. The university offered him a full scholarship, and Scotty got inserted into the starting lineup with his new height and a pterodactyl wingspan of seven foot three. On top of his point guard skills, Pippen started to dominate. Coach Dyer first played Scotty at both guard positions, but later on, he used him on the wing and sometimes even at center. Because of that, Pippen began developing the all-around game that later made him famous in the NBA. Scotty also gained weight and strength, and he finished his senior year with the averages of 24 points, 10 rebounds, and 4.5 assists on 60% shooting. However, because Central Arkansas competed in the lowly NAIA division, Pippen was a hidden gem, and many GMs figured he wouldn't be able to replicate that output in the NBA. The Bulls' Jerry Krause was not one of those GMs, and he wanted Pippen badly. In the 1987 NBA draft, Scotty was selected fifth overall by Seattle, but Kraus then traded Chicago's eighth pick and multiple future picks to get Pippen, which proved to be one of the smartest decisions of his career. Adapting to the NBA and the Pistons roadblock. Until the arrival of Pippen and Horace Grant for the 1987-88 season, the Chicago Bulls were a one-dimensional team that depended heavily on one player, Michael Jordan. MJ was a superstar and the main offensive option, but although his qualities were undeniable, he could not lead the team on his own. The Bulls never had a positive record in Jordan's first three seasons and have won only one playoff game, routinely losing in the first round of the postseason. Scotty came off the bench as a rookie, and he struggled with the speed of the game and tactics at first. But with Pippen on the team, Chicago had won 50 games, and in the deciding game five of the first round, Scotty had his first career start, and he contributed with 24 points, five assists, and three steals. The Bulls won the series and finally advanced to the second round, where they would lose to the Pistons in five games. Pippen had back surgery and missed the start of the 89 season. He came off the bench in the first 16 games upon his return, but once he entered the starting five, he never subbed in again. Pip finished the regular season with 14 points, six rebounds, and 3.5 assists on average. And the Bulls made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, where they once again lost to the Pistons. In 1990, Phil Jackson became the head coach. The Bulls won 55 games, and Pip displayed an excellent all-around game. He improved in all statistical categories and was named an all-star. In the playoffs, the Bulls reached the Eastern Conference Finals for the second season in a row, but again lost to old acquaintances from Detroit, this time in seven games. Pippen played great for the entire playoffs, but in the crucial Game 7, he complained of having terrible migraines and ended up scoring two points on one for ten of shooting. Jordan, who wasn't accustomed to not trusting his teammates, was not too pleased with Scotty and didn't fully believe in his headaches, but that would all soon change. 3 Pete. For the 1991 season, the Bulls fired on all cylinders. They were the best offensive team in the league and won a franchise record 61 games, with Jordan as the MVP. Pippen again improved in almost all statistical categories, with 18 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists on average, but was unjustly left off the All-Star game roster. In the playoffs, Pippen's numbers improved again, and he played the most suffocating defense in the entire NBA, outside of maybe Dennis Rodman. 
the Bulls finally got their revenge on the Pistons, sweeping Detroit in the Eastern Finals, which ended in the famous Pistons walk-off without the congratulatory handshakes. In the Finals, the Bulls played against the Lakers and Magic Johnson, who was playing in his ninth Finals. While Jordan was absolutely spectacular in that series offensively, it was Pippen's defense on Magic that made a big difference and gave the Bulls a lot of fast-break points. In the fifth game, Pip led both teams in scoring with 32 and rebounding with 13, along with seven assists and five steals. And the Bulls have won the first title in franchise history. Next year, Pippen averaged 21, 8, and 7 and made the All-Star game again, second All-NBA team and first team All-Defense. In the playoffs, he shined when it mattered the most. In Game 7 of the Eastern Semifinals against the Knicks, he recorded a triple-double, and for the series, Pip led the team in all statistical categories other than scoring. In the finals, Chicago defeated Portland in six games, and a few months later, Pippen won the gold medal at the Olympics as a member of the Dream Team. The Bulls entered 1993 fatigued and won 10 games less than the year before. However, Jordan, and especially Pippen, raised their games for the playoffs, where the Bulls reached another NBA Finals. Scotty averaged a near triple-double in the Finals, with 22 points, 9 boards, and 8 assists in 6 games. Like always, he was tasked with the assignment of guarding the best opposing player, which in this case was Charles Barkley. Scotty delivered once again perfectly doubling Barkley with Horace Grant and then switching on everybody else when Barkley got rid of the ball. Defensively, he was in the prime of his career, and this series showed perfectly how instrumental Pippen was for the Bulls, despite Jordan averaging 41 points in the finals. Pippen's Best Season After the death of his father and enormous media pressure, Michael Jordan retired from basketball before the start of the 1994 regular season. The Bulls added Steve Kerr, the most accurate three-point shooter ever, and Tony Kukoc, the best European player at the time. But more than anything, the Bulls now became Scotty's team. There were people who expected Scotty to become Jordan, shoot 25 times per game, and average over 30 points. But that was not Pippen's game, and he continued to play like he always did. Yes, he averaged a career high in scoring with 22 points per game, but he only marginally increased the number of shot attempts from the previous years, shooting at an excellent 49% clip, and his passing game didn't suffer. Pippen also notched a career high in rebounds in 1994, snatching 8.7 boards per game, as well as steals, with 2.9 thefts per contest. I never thought about trying to win MVP or do things as an individual. It never crossed my mind to try and lead the league in scoring. That's just not how I played the game, and it wasn't in my pedigree. Pip showed that he was an unbelievable leader, propelling the Bulls to a 55-27 record, just two wins shy from the year before, and the Bulls showcased a level of play that no one thought could be achieved without the services of number 23. Pippen was the All-Star MVP in 1994, the leading vote-getter for All-NBA First Team and for the All-Defensive Team, and he finished third in MVP voting. Tony Kukoc said that Pippen helped him tremendously in his first NBA season, and the entire Bulls team praised Scotty for putting the team on his shoulders and giving it all on both ends of the court. And it was Tony Kukoc who stole the show in the pivotal moments of Game 3 in the Eastern Semis against the Knicks. The game was tied with 1.8 seconds remaining when Phil Jackson called a timeout. Pippen demanded the ball in the final possession, but Jackson drew the play for Kukoc. Pissed off and thinking that the coach doesn't trust him, Pippen refused to go back into the game. Kukoc did eventually get the ball, and he sank a beautiful turnaround jumper for the win. While everybody celebrated, Pippen was still sulking on the bench. He apologized to everybody when they got back to the locker room, and this was the only dark moment of Pippen's phenomenal season. The series was eventually decided in Game 7, during which Pippen scored arguably the most disrespectful dunk in NBA history over Ewing. But Ewing would have the last laugh, and the Knicks won the game and would later go on to the finals. In 1995, Pippen had virtually identical numbers as the year before. He led the league in steals and made the first team all NBA and first team all defense. But the season will forever be remembered by the I'm back return of Michael Jordan. However, Jordan wasn't as effective as before, and also the Bulls lost Horace Grant, who was their best rebounder and interior defender, and Chicago lost to Orlando in the conference semis. Second 3 P. For the 1996 season, Jordan came fully prepared, and even more importantly, the Bulls replaced Grant with Dennis Rodman, a fierce defender and the best rebounder in NBA history. 
With their new big three and an excellent supporting cast, the Bulls won an NBA record 72 games and steamrolled through opponents to win their fourth NBA title. In 1997, it was much the same. Pippen scored a career-high 47 points against the Nuggets. The Bulls dominated the regular season with 69 wins and had very little trouble on their way to another NBA Finals. But in the Finals, the Stockton Malone-led Utah proved to be extremely tough, and the Bulls never scored 100 points in the series. Pippen tied the Finals record in Game 3 with seven made threes, and in Game 5, Jordan managed to give the Bulls a 3-2 lead with the infamous flu game, after which he collapsed into Pippen's arms. In Game 6, Pippen made one of the biggest plays of his career, with Chicago up by two and five seconds left. Scotty stole the inbounds pass, dove on the floor, and passed the ball to Kukoc for a game-winning dunk and the championship. Next year, which was thoroughly described in the Last Dance documentary, Pippen deliberately delayed surgery and missed the first half of the season due to a quarrel with the Bulls GM Jerry Krause, who wanted to trade Scotty on several occasions and wouldn't restructure his contract when it was clear that Pippen was the most underpaid player in the league. Pippen played through the injury the whole playoffs, and he mostly served as a decoy in the finals against Utah because his back was killing him and he couldn't shoot. Still, the Bulls bested Utah again, and the Bulls won title number six later years. Scotty was sent to Houston to team up with the aging Barkley and Olajuwon for $11 million per year in a sign-and-trade deal. But other than a big payday, his lone year in Houston was a failure. He often fought with Barkley, and the team lost in the first round of the playoffs. Scotty was then traded to Portland, and the Blazers reached the conference finals with a 15-point lead in the fourth quarter of Game 7 against the Lakers. Close but no cigar, as the Lakers pulled off a miraculous comeback, highlighted by Kobe's crossover on Pippen and the alley-oop to Shaq. For the next three seasons in Portland, Pippen was still productive, but in a reduced role. He played his last season with the Bulls, under the pretext of mentoring young players, but more to muster as many dollars from them as he could. It was a severance pay for those underpaid years in the 90s. Legacy Along with Larry Bird, Scottie Pippen was the original point forward. He could pass like a point guard and score like a shooting guard and control the entire offense by himself. But unlike Bird, Scottie could impact the game without scoring a single point or dishing a single assist due to his brilliant defensive skills. His incredible lateral quickness and long arms allowed him to guard all five players during one possession, which was beautifully described in Kobe Bryant's Detail series. Pippen is underrated because he was always in Jordan's shadow, and understandably so. But if it weren't for Pippen, the Bulls wouldn't be able to execute full-court pressure as they did. Their half-court ball distribution wouldn't be the same, and their transition game wouldn't be as deadly. If Scotty didn't play next to Michael, Jordan wouldn't be able to focus the majority of his energy on scoring because he knew that Pippen would hound the opponent's best player for 48 minutes. Pippen was the ultimate team player who could do everything on the court, and in my opinion, he's among the five or six best small forwards ever.